check this here. Oh, there we go. Magic. It's a real honor to be here. Uh, the mission of TED is truly a noble one. And as I was just pointed out, um, I'm here with my wife in support of our family. Uh, and we have several Falcons in the crew, so I just wanted to point that out. Class of 84, my wife Jill 82, Tanner 16, and Autumn to be 19. So, go Falcons. I'm here because I want to personally challenge everyone here to dare to wonder. Often, big breakthroughs are the result of the naive daring of outsiders. And I just want to point out to everyone here that we are all outsiders. Every one of us. We are outsiders to areas and fields that, where we can still make a difference. Now, there are many who dare to wonder, but it seems like there are very few who are able to make that next step. And that's where passion and curiosity, passion and curiosity are combined with persistence and hard work. And the results, well, the results are things that we now take for granted that weren't accepted at first. Things like germ theory, antibiotics, putting a human being on the moon, global warming, the idea that the word, that the earth is not is not flat. I'm an architect. I'm not a scientist. I'm an outsider. When it comes to things like hoverboards, for about 20 years I've been working on a better way to build. Uh, where I was inspired by my mentor, who challenged all his students in architecture to come up with a better building system. And I worked on that for 20 years and with passion and curiosity, came up with a better system for building in areas that are prone to earthquakes, floods, rising sea levels. By learning to build in harmony with Mother Nature. Now, I want to take a moment and talk about the state of the art in seismic design. This is about earthquake protection. There is something called base isolation uh, in tomb masses. Now, base isolation is a system that's essentially a kinetic transformer. It takes the energy of the earthquake, that short, fast shaking, and converts it into long, slow movements that a building structure can tolerate. A kinetic transformer. Well, earlier this year, ArxPax, A-R-X-P-A-X, ArxPax was issued a patent for our three-part foundation system. Now, this is a more effective way, a more cost-effective way for building for these areas subject to earthquakes, floods, and rising sea levels. It consists of a container vessel. Think of a pool, a buffer medium, water, and a construction platform, a barge. That's it. A barge and a pool, a shallow pool, that allows the structure to be decoupled from the earth. Very simple concept. Now we have about 80 pages in this patent that explain how to do this, but that's the gist of it. Now that buffer medium it can be a liquid, obviously. It could also be a gas, or even a liquefiable solid. Or, if you dare to wonder, an electromagnetic field. If you can hover a 50,000 kilogram train, why not a house? Well, that was the first of many questions that came from this outsider's perspective, daring to wonder that allowed us to build a hoverboard. So I started researching all the intellectual property, all the patents out there for magnetic levitation, or maglev, as it's called. And it turns out there is no good way, or no, there was no good way, to hover a dynamic payload, that's someone walking around on the platform, a house, to hover a dynamic payload in a stationary position. The state of the art in maglev now 
Um, if we look, for example, to Japan and their superconducting maglev train that's being built outside Tokyo now, it will be operational in 2027 at a cost of $500 million per mile. It's a lot of money. It doesn't even levitate unless it's going 170 kilometers an hour. Okay, so I want to take that idea. We have this magnetically levitated train. It's levitating. Now, how do you take this train and adapt that to hover a stationary object? And I'm going to share with you now the first technical epiphany that we had in this, well, in coming up with a hoverboard. So let's imagine for a minute this, this train, and it's traveling in a circle. All right? Now stay with me, because not everyone gets this at first. This train is traveling in a, in a circle. Now imagine that the train is the same length as the track. That's right. The caboose is touching the engine. They're connected. That system, relative to the Earth, is stationary. So, we've all heard about thinking outside the box. But I want to remind everybody that a box is a three-dimensional object. When you're looking at a problem on a page, a sheet of paper, remember to think off that page. It's that kind of multidimensional thinking that allows, with a little bit of persistence and passion, to do the impossible. And until our Kickstarter campaign launched on October 21st, just a couple months ago, the first line of the Wikipedia entry for hoverboards began, and I quote, a fictional device. Well, I'm very happy to say it doesn't say that anymore. Now, the Hendo hoverboard is, is very cool, but to us, Arx Pax, it's a, uh, an important tool to convey that this technology is now possible. There are so many applications where this can apply. In transportation, obviously, factory automation, Entertainment, recreation, there are even space applications. How are we doing this? Well, I'm happily, or I will happily explain some of the general details or general concepts during the demonstration, but in a word, efficiency. Just a big step in efficiency in the transmission of electromagnetic energy. What we call magnetic field architecture because I'm an architect, right? So if we look at things in terms of a power to mass ratio, the objects we're gonna demonstrate out there require about 40 watts per kilogram. By comparison, by comparison, the Black Hawk helicopter, the Army's workhorse, requires 158 watts per kilogram. Now, if we convert that to uh, terms of horsepower for a 50,000 kilogram payload, that turns out to be about 2,700 horsepower for our system lift, essentially a building, let's say. For the helicopter system, it's about 10,500 horsepower to push all that air. Efficiency. So this brings us to the most important application. ArxPax, our company name, is what this is really all about. ArxPax is a, well, loosely translated from the Latin, it means citadel of peace. This is our opportunity, our obligation and responsibility to get this technology out there because it can result in saving lives, property, and communities now. Going back to that Earthquake safety, base isolation. The problem with a kinetic transformer is, if you're in a 20-story building in Mexico City that's base isolated, and there's a 3.0 earthquake that no one on the street even felt, all of a sudden, everyone's getting motion sick on that 20th floor. What we have is not just improved base isolation, but an opportunity for real, perfect isolation. Let me walk you through how that might work. 
The Hayward Fault, the most dangerous fault, that way, the most dangerous fault in the Bay Area. If there were an earthquake now, we would feel a primary wave hit this building. Uh, and then followed several seconds later by the secondary waves. And those are the destructive ones. So we have an early warning system. They exist today. They're used for things like opening fire station doors and turning on backup generators at hospitals. That early warning system goes off. Our hover engines turn on. The landing gear retracts. The ground starts to shake. The ground stops shaking. The landing gear returns. And no one in that room or that building ever knew there, were, there was an earthquake. Perfect isolation. No movement at all. Are we going to start with skyscrapers? No. But we can start now with things like server farms, individually hovering server racks, operating rooms in hospitals, precious pieces of art, some critical equipment for sensitive operations in manufacturing and medicine. The list goes on and on. But please, don't get hung up on this notion of the electrical requirements for the system to work. It's been uh, well, an early, early uh, obvious objection. Well, what happens when the power goes out? There are no electrical requirements for the system. Why? Because we can store energy in many, many different ways. We can store kinetic energy, potential energy. We can store mechanical energy, or chemical energy, or any combination thereof. I'll just point out the most efficient, or I'm sorry, the most energy dense form of non-nuclear energy storage is rocket fuel. Let's see where we might go with this. Now, daring to wonder though, is not without risks. Like any new endeavor, there are risks. But I want to point out one in particular that is not to be underestimated, and that is the human resistance to change. To paraphrase the 19th century German philosopher Arthur Schopenhauer, every truth in the advancement of human history, no matter how benevolent, no matter how benign, is first met with ridicule, and then with violent opposition, until it is finally recognized as being self-evident. Jill reminds me all the time when we're looking at our YouTube videos, don't read the comments. Then I remind myself that other people's opinions of me are none of my business. Focus on your passion. Be persistent. Work hard. Surround yourself with people who, who support you. They don't have to understand all your ideas. They just have to understand you. And whatever you do, never stop daring to wonder. Thank you.